some of the small things that I love about Wange is just the sunrise. It's beautiful. The birds, the wildlife. Yeah, I love being in the bush. I love wildlife conservation. Uh, in the Zimbabwe society, it's uh, difficult for a woman to be away from their family. There's a pride, there's a big pride, although it's, uh, it separates sometimes, but sometimes they are like 26 when they come together. So it's a huge pride. And hopefully we might see some lions there. The first time I saw a lion in the wild, it was extraordinary. The last time I saw Cecil the lion was in 2015. I knew Cecil very well because he was one of my study lions. Uh, he had a collar and we were tracking him and I was collecting data on him with the cubs. I didn't expect that to be the last time that I would see him. But yeah, it was the last time that I saw you. Tonight, the hunt is on for the man who killed Cecil, a 13-year-old lion and tourist attraction in Zimbabwe's safari industry. Cecil was perhaps Zimbabwe's most famous lion. The majestic male, 13 years old, with a famous black mane, has been killed by hunters. I think it's important to have some good come out of this disgusting tragedy. So this is the website for the Wildlife Conservation Research Unit, unit at Oxford, uh, wildcru.org. These are the researchers who put the collar on. Cecil, which was basically trying to be It opened many people's eyes to lion conservation issues and it also helped me to, to cover my fourth year of PhD at Oxford University. I was at home in Kimberley when I heard uh, that Cecil was shot. I live in Kimberley because my family is there. Uh, it's a small town in the Northern Cape in South Africa. It's complicated because I live in three countries. I'm living in Kimberley at the moment with my family, but I'm also studying in Oxford in the UK. And I also spend some time in the field in Wanga National Park where I'm studying lions. I have to find a balance between my work in Wanga National Park and my son. It has been a process for him to understand. Uh, yeah, when he was little, it was difficult for him uh, every time I went away, but as he grew older, he's now more understanding of the situation. <laughs> the bus ride from Kimberley, South Africa to Wanga National Park is a very long ride. It takes more than 36 hours. I wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning and get to the bus. Uh, the bus will take me to Johannesburg in South Africa. In Johannesburg, it's, uh, it frightens me to be there and it's not safe. So, um, I change buses and take another bus that would leave me in, in Bulawayo in Zimbabwe. And at the border, it might take hours for, for the bus to be processed and for us to be processed. The bus from Bulawayo to Ange is unpredictable. 
sometimes it's late and it's not a luxury coach so it's not comfortable at all and sometimes it's packed It's always exciting to, to see the lion. It always feels like the first time. So I'm always excited when I see the lion. Oh yeah, I can see it. There. In order for us to, to come up with conservation measures, we have to understand how a species behaves. So we record how many individuals there are, their sex, their age, and uh, whether they belong to that pride or they are new individuals. There were four females. There were three adult females. Some of the data that I'm collecting is the prey abundance data. You can tell me to stop. You can tell me to stop when you see something. Okay. I'll be driving and recording. The one who's our tracker would be sitting in front of the vehicle on a specialized seat, counting all the animal tracks he sees. Sixteen impala, one zebra. One zebra. We collect data on all the animal species that we find. Yeah, the, 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 the research is risky because we do a lot of walking. Even like when you are driving, there's always a risk of encountering like elephants, even lions and buffaloes. So it's always risky. All the people I work with are wonderful. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to be the only woman among all the men, uh, but they treat me as an equal and they respect me as a person. And I think that's why we work together very well. It would be easier to go and work uh, in another country and be a scientist somewhere else. It's so difficult to how to survive in Zimbabwe. Uh, the economy is collapsing and so it's, it's really difficult to get by. Uh, but I would want to stay uh, in Zimbabwe and help build Zimbabwe because the, the future will be brighter. It's all worth it. There are things that are, both of the things that I love. I love my son and I love my job. Have you thought about giving up? Yeah, there are moments when I have thought about giving up. It's hard being a woman in science. Society doesn't treat women the same way they treat men. It's not acceptable for me to be away or to travel a lot. But for a man to do the same thing, it's acceptable. But it's something that I love. And so I have to find a way to move forward.